so they're the outcomes then of the Pretoria High Court in the matter involving the Speaker. So let's continue to get reaction to this now, uh, to the Speaker of Parliament's bid to help that interdict for her arrest. And I'm joined by the DA's Parliamentary Chief Whip, Sibiwe Hwarube. Uh, Sibiwe, good morning to you. Thanks uh, for being available to us. I'm not sure if you were watching that judgment live, although one imagines uh, the interest from your side would be immense given the motion um, that you're tabling in Parliament. But share with us just your reaction to how things went in court today. Yes, good morning and good morning to your viewers. <clears throat> of course, we were watching the, the, um, the court judgment with interest because it does have an impact and a bearing on the urgency that we've asked Parliament to prioritize the motion of no confidence in the Speaker. Um, of course, we always held that whatever the outcomes of the case that the NPA is pursuing, it does not mean that Parliament must shirk off its responsibility of holding the Speaker to account. We've long held that the allegations that the Speaker is facing are of a grave nature, and that nobody in her, in her high office, as she indicated, and in her uh, responsibilities as the leader of the uh, NA in Parliament should be facing such allegations and still retain their position. And therefore, we've, we, we've initially called for her to step down, but clearly, the, the Speaker is now digging in her heels, does not want to resign, and so we brought this motion. And now we are demanding the Deputy Speaker to schedule this, this motion of no confidence this week already because we now are facing a situation where we will be in contravention of the rules, which indicate that whenever a motion of this kind has been tabled, it needs to be prioritized and debated urgently. Yeah, because you also, uh, you know, are up against the clock in terms of parliamentary recess. So just talk to us a little bit more about uh, the likelihood, uh, given that it has been accepted, the likelihood of it being heard sooner rather than later. So procedurally, um, there's no way that the Deputy Speaker can allow for the motion to not be, to have accepted it, because it does meet the, um, the, the, the requirements. But there's no way procedurally that he can allow for the, for the debate to not be debated and voted on. But the, 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 the danger here is that the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker and perhaps the ANC could be delaying this matter so that there can be almost an expiration of the term. Or, as I've read during the weekend in the weekend newspapers, that they, are delayed, they could be delaying the parliamentary proceedings while they are dealing with this matter internally. And I do want to make it clear that the ANC's step-aside policy has nothing to do with the Parliament and the rest of South Africa. That is an internal ANC process. And so the Deputy Speaker has absolutely no leg to stand on in delaying this matter. And if the ANC continues to do what they've done before, which is to always shield their own from accountability and not vote for the motion, that's entirely fine. They must be the ones that must explain to the public why it is that somebody facing these kind of allegations has been protected and, um, and, and closed ranks around by their own party. And so that is our interest. Our interest is that no, it can never be that the expiration of a term means that you cannot be held accountable. And that is what we want to do, that we want to bring back the culture of accountability in our institutions, that regardless of who you are, if you are found wanting in the role that you hold, that we must hold you accountable. Um, speaking of uh, the political support um, and where that lies in terms of pursuing this motion, any indication of how much support you will have? Look, the, um, the, I, I would venture and say we would have the, 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 the support of all opposition parties. I know that the EFF had uh, even communicated publicly to indicate that they would support the motion. And so collectively, the opposition has 170 seats slash votes in the House. And so we would have those votes. But ultimately, it does hinge on, um, um, on, on the ANC and whether some amongst them will vote with the opposition or whether the party will say, look, we have been unable to get the, the speaker to resign and therefore we will support this motion in the interest of accountability. If they're unable to do that, then for me, then the question becomes South Africans will hold them to account for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Um, Sivibe, there was a lot said about whether this was, you know, special treatment um, that the speaker was w w was getting. We heard um, from, obviously we heard from court, just the legs and, and, and the judge broke it down quite nicely about um, this not meeting the standard for, for both urgency or, or some of the assertions that the speaker made in those, um, those uh, in, in her founding affidavit around, um, you know, the, the state's case and so on and, and, and so forth. But I want to deal with the issue of preferential treatment and the NPA basically reiterating again after this judgment that the kind of courtesy that was extended to the speaker is a courtesy that is available, um, you know, to all members of society if their legal representative wants it to go and approach them um, to kind of manage how either, you know, a, a suspect or somebody who's being accused will hand themselves over or appear in court. Your thoughts on that? Look, I think it's going to be very, very important for law enforcement agencies to, to really maintain not only consistency, but also to <clears throat> maintain fairness. Um, I was slightly concerned when I read some reports about the NPA's head having said that there's going to be uh, almost a re-evaluation of how the agency deals with high-profile cases. I think that high-profile cases or not, I think that all South Africans should be facing the law equally. Because law enforcement agencies need to not only apply the law um, appropriately and fairly and, and, and across the board, but they also need to be, appear to be doing so. And that's an important thing because it, it instills public trust that institutions are not somehow politically strong-armed to deal with particularly put the politically connected in a different way. So not only has, must it be done so in earnest, it must also appear to be doing so, so that you can make sure that the legitimacy in these processes is upheld. Otherwise, once we start bending the rules here and there to accommodate those who are politically connected, it's a slippery slope in my view, because at what point do you stop? At what point do you say it's not convenient for us to pursue a raid at the yeah. house um, because there's an election that is looming? And so these are the things that are really, really important that we look out for and that the NPA, the Hawks and other law enforcement agencies mm. retain their independence.